Hello, this is Jenna Nichols. Today we're going to talk about structure 2.4.6 for IB chemistry. Um, this is an HO only topic um, and it's all about condensation polymers. They form by the reaction between functional groups and the monomers and with the release of a small molecule. Okay, so to make a condensation polymer, you have to have functional groups on the molecules that are reacting. Um, and frequently those are things like alcohols, or carboxylic acids. And, you know, it'll be attached to other things, but the important parts of the functional groups, that's what's actually doing the reacting. And so when it reacts, it's going to form a new bond, new connection. So there's our carbon, oxygen, but effectively the hydrogens and oxygens are going to be released to form water and they will form a new bond to the other carbon. So you'll have two products, one which is a small molecule and one which is the polymer. Now in order to make like a continuing polymer, these compounds also need a functional group on the other side, somewhere near the end, uh, to have like a continuing, uh, continually growing polymer. Uh, but you can just have like uh, two particles combining into one, and that works as well. Um, so let's look at a couple other examples. You could, in theory, even have just two alcohols reacting. And um, same idea, it's going to release water. What's formed um, in this case is an ether with an oxygen in the middle, and it will release a water molecule. So this is an ether, this is an alcohol, uh, these are two alcohols, this was a carboxylic acid, and it formed an ester product. So depending on what the functional groups are in your reactants, you will form a new functional group in the products. Um, but you can also, there are lots of other examples, but it will always be accompanied by the release of a small molecule. Another example uh, of this type of reaction is a polyamide. Polyamides form from a carboxylic acid reacting with an amine. And what happens here is, again, you're going to have a, um, a water molecule being released. So uh, one of the, let me draw it a little differently. So you can see there. Water molecule will be released. And it will form a new linkage between the carbon with the double bond O and the nitrogen. And so this functional group that was being formed is called an amide. And so when you form a polymer of this, it's called a polyamide. Um, so again, that nitrogen has to be directly next to a carbon with a double bond O. Um, I also want to point out that this, uh, anytime you're forming water as the small molecule that's being released, that's kind of why it's called a condensation reaction. Because if you think about condensation as uh, this change of state, it's going from a gas to a liquid, it's forming liquid water. Um, the same kind of idea here. Uh, you're forming water uh, as the small molecule. It doesn't have to be water, though. It could be other things, uh, but in this case, it is. Now, polyamides are important because they form the basis of amino acids linking together to form proteins. This is one of our types of biomolecules. So amino acids um, always have two functional groups on them. They have an amine group and a carboxylic acid group on the same molecule. So this is an amino acid because it has an amine and an acid. And then there's some side chain R. Um, and there's about 20, 22 amino acids um, that occur naturally. And um, they're going to link up in different ways to form your polypeptide chain is what it's called. So when you have one amino acid reacting with another amino acid, and it might have the same R group, it might have different R groups, just depends on the sequence. 
um, but effectively you're going to release a water molecule and the new polypeptide that's formed. R2, C double bond O, OH. And the great thing about um, this is called a polypeptide is that you have a functional group on either end still, so you can continue growing the chain. And so that's how you form very complex uh, proteins because these amino acids can link up in a lot of different orientations, uh, different sequences, and then they will fold, form secondary tertiary structure from there. Um, so this, the functional group in the middle here is, is an amide, uh, but we frequently call that a peptide bond or a peptide linkage because it's forming this polypeptide, um, which is another name for a protein. There's a couple other polyamides that you um, should be familiar with. Again, you don't need to memorize them, but you should, you know, be able to recognize them if that pops up. All right. So there's, um, this is a dicarboxylic acid. There's two of those carboxylic acid groups. And we have NH2, CH26, NH2. All right, so in this case, instead of like with amino acids, you have an amine and an acid group on the same molecule. This time we have two acids on one molecule, two amine groups on the other molecule. And when they react um, and form our polymer, you're going to have um, this OH is, effective, is unaffected. And you're forming that new amide uh, functional group in the middle here. And you can continue to repeat it like this. So this nitrogen uh, at the end could attach to another carboxylic acid group if you have an additional one of those molecules. This end carboxylic acid could react to the amine group on an additional one of those molecules. So you can continue growing that polymer based on the number of units that you have. Um, and so this is actually the structure of nylon, um, which is really nice because you can continue to grow that chain as you need to. Um, one other example that I think is pretty cool to look at is um, using a benzene. Remember, benzene has that uh, alternating double bonds in the ring there. And in this case, we have a chloride on the carbon, another benzene group. All right. So in this case, we've got chlorines instead of hydrogens um, or hydroxyl groups on the carbon. Um, so it's a little different uh, in that the carbon, I'm sorry, the chlorine and the hydrogen are going to react and release hydrochloric acid, HCl, as our small molecule instead of water. So remember in our most of our polyamides you're going to see the um, OH and NH react to form water as a product. Uh, but in this case, instead of H2O, you're forming HCl. So the bond that you wind up forming looks like this. And then there's your ring. C double bond O, Cl. And that can repeat and continue to repeat because you have um, another amine group and another chlorine group on the ends. And this is the um, repeating unit of a very important polymer called Kevlar, which um, is used for like bulletproof vests. Um, so it's still forming an amide, polyamide. Um, it's just releasing HCl instead of water as our small molecule. Let's see, whenever we're reacting a carboxylic acid with an alcohol, it's going to form an ester, ester language. Um, so let's look at if we have a dicarboxylic acid like this, 
benzene um, reacting with our alcohol. So this is our carboxylic acid with our alcohol. And this one is actually a diol. You're going to um, release water this time as our small molecule. And it's going to form a, an ester linkage here. Squeeze that on there, the OH. Um, and again, this can repeat because it has uh, another functional group on either end, which is nice. So it can continue to grow the chain, the polymer chain. Um, I do want to point out, though, um, we would always say, depending on the number of units, you're going to form a certain number of water molecules. So this would be 2n plus um, 2n minus 1, excuse me. So twice the number of individual um, of repeating units minus one number of water molecules that are released for your polymer chain. Um, and so this is uh, polyester, and this functional group right here is the ester linkage, or is the ester functional group. Another biomolecule um, is polysaccharides. We, we already talked about proteins, um, and so polysaccharides is another um, biomolecule that can form from condensation polymers um, using sugars. And so you would start with a monosaccharide. And I'm going to use a skeletal structure to kind of help with this so it is a little easier to draw. So this one is glucose, which is a monosaccharide. And let's say it's going to react with fructose. glucose and fructose. When glucose and fructose react with each other, they're going to form a um, glycosidic linkage in here. So the hydrogen and the hydroxide are going to link and release water, condensation reaction, and you're going to wind up with a disaccharide. And then we have to draw all of our hydroxyl groups. Yep, right there. Okay, and so this is the disaccharide saccharide sucrose. So you're forming an ether, a glycosidic bond, between the two monosaccharides to form this disaccharide. And you can continue building the structure of this polysaccharide. Um, and depending on what monosaccharides you have and what structure they have, you can make things like starch, um, which are like macro, super macro molecules that have repeating units of um, glucose um, and provide a lot of structural integrity that way. Let's talk for a second about atom economy. Remember that atom economy is the mass of your desired product, I'm going to use P for product, over the mass of, mass, mass of all of the reactants times 100. And so when you have a, an addition polymer where you're adding the two alkenes together, they, they all link up okay, and you're not releasing any other molecule. So for an addition polymer, the atom economy is 100% for addition. Now because condensation polymers also release another small molecule that is not our desired product, whether it's water or whether it's um, something small like HCl, um, it's going to have an atom economy that is less than 100%. Uh, and it, you know, it just depends on the particular reaction that's going on, but it will always be less than 100% for condensation. Because of that small molecule that's released. So this example question has us looking at the reverse of condensation polymerization. Um, so instead of forming the polymer, we're going to break it apart. 
So this one, when a polyamide is broken down by hydrolysis, what are the two types of products formed? Um, so let's draw our generic amide. And so this is the bond here. That is that amide linkage. And when that is broken down, effectively you are adding water, hydrolysis adding water. So that's going to break apart into a carboxylic acid and the other hydrogen from the water goes to form the amine. So uh, the two types of products formed is going to be a carboxylic acid and an amine. Now for this polymer, um, we want to make a condensation polymer from butanoic acid and ethanol. So but means four carbons and it's in carboxylic acid. And then um, carbon has to have four bonds, so you fill in the rest with hydrogens. And then it is reacting with ethanol. Eth means two carbons, single bonds, and our alcohol group. And then I want to fill up the rest of the bonds for carbon with hydrogen. So there's butanoic acid and ethanol. Um, and I drew it like this so that way the functional groups are facing each other. It just makes it easier to see. You don't have to draw it that way. But then the condensation part of this is you're going to remove a water and you will form this ester linkage here. And you would fill in all of the hydrogens. Now, this one can really just form the one ester because it does not have functional groups on either end. So it kind of stops here. Um, but if you had you, you know, a repeat functional group on the ends of either one, then you could continue and create that macromolecule, um, the polyester in this case. Okay, so the linking question here, it links to structure 3.2. And it's talking about what functional groups and molecules can enable them to act as monomers for a condensation reaction. And so we looked at those in this lesson. We have our carboxylic acids, amines. Um, you could also have alcohols. Those would act as the monomers. Um, and then the ones that are formed, and I know it doesn't specifically ask this, but the ones that are formed are going to typically be amides um, you'll see polyesters uh, and um, occasionally you'll see an ether pop up if there's two alcohols reacting. So those are your functional groups for condensation reactions.